Good morning. Good morning. Hold, please. To wipe your face. Happy Friday. How's everybody? My nose is running. Are y'all having allergies and sinus? I know y'all are. I know everybody is. And, pardon me, you're fine. If you're one of the lucky two out of eight billion, I'm jealous. The two that don't have to deal with the allergies and sinus. Anyway, um, we're vlogging today and my drive to work is anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. And so I was like, I'm gonna get on here and vlog and I had gotten a request, forgive me, I don't remember who asked me um, I'll go back and look in the comments. Um, ask me if I would share my asthma story. And I was like, sure, sure. And it's a pretty good one, actually, for, for asthma. So I thought, let's vlog today, and on the way to work, let's talk about a white girl's asthma story. So, it's not long. I won't keep you here all day. It's fine. You're fine. Settle in with your water. I bought a big bag of lemons last night. I don't have any lemon in this one. Um, totally, it was rushing out the door, but I bought a giant bag of lemons, so I'm going to start doing our lemon water again. And then uh, we got our coffee. Sugar-free. Anyway, um, let's see. When my whole childhood... There, there were no issues, uh, no issues at all. I didn't, I didn't have allergies and sinus. And then when I was, or asthma, when I was 10 years old, we went to my Aunt Jennifer's house and she had a long haired cat. Now mind you, I've always grown up with animals. Mom has always had dogs and cats, always, always, always. We've always had dogs and cats and goldfish. I was raised with animals. We all love animals. Um, I still have animals. Never had a problem with animals until we discovered when I was 10 years old. Um, Aunt Jennifer's house, she had a big, gorgeous, black, long-haired cat. Um, I guess it was a Persian, long-haired, beautiful, and her name was Dallas. And she was bougie and gorgeous, and we all loved her. Um, but she was a real sweet cat, and she let you um, love on her and pet her and... So that's what I was doing. I was playing with the cat and all of a sudden I started sneezing and eyes watering and itching and throat hurting and just miserable. And I'm like, what is happening? Because for 10 years I've never had problems. And my mom's like, I think you're allergic to cats. I'm like, but we have a cat. But Dallas was a long haired, different kind of cat. And so that's when we figured out I took a Benadryl and I was fine. And then from 10 to 16 years old, I had no more in, no more instances. From 10 to 16, I was playing softball. I was running track. I was doing cheerleading. Um, I rode my bike all the time. I was swimming. I mean, just very active. I've always been very active like I am now. And so from 10 to 16, they, I had no problems, none. And then one day, uh, it was summer, I think, summer or fall, it's kind of around this time of year probably, and it was a Saturday, and I just, I hadn't done anything strenuous, but I just went to my mom and I said, I can't breathe, like, I can't breathe, and she's like, okay, I said, I'm going to go lay on your bed, and so I laid on her bed, because I wanted to be near her. And I couldn't get comfortable. I propped myself up on pillows. I laid on my side. I said, Mom, I just can't get any air. I mean, I wasn't panicking or anything. We weren't like, oh my God, get her to the ER. It wasn't anything like that. I just was very short of breath and we couldn't figure out why. Well, that lasted most of the day. And then in the evening, Mom's like, let's go ahead and go. Mom's like, I think you have asthma. Mom's no. Mom's no. <laughs> so, She's like, let's go to the ER. So we piddled and went to the ER. Like I said, nobody was in a panic. Mom kind of had an idea of what was going on. Sorry if we're bouncing. 
and there's I'm turning the light will go away so we go to the ER they gave me a breathing treatment which cleared me right up and they diagnosed me with bronchitis even though nothing else was wrong I wasn't coughing I didn't have a sore throat I didn't have a headache I wasn't congested I just couldn't breathe mom's like uh, shh, okay I guess she's got bronchitis don't think so pretty sure she has asthma but okay so we did that and then I was fine for like a year I didn't have another incident and then when I was 17 the exact same thing happened mom I can't breathe she's like you've got asthma and at this at this point in my life at 17 years old I was I would just take a Benadryl if I needed something if I had out by, by 17 we established I had allergies and that I was allergic to cats established we established that with Dallas uh, but that's just an allergy take a Benadryl get over it you're fine well this has, you know now at 17 16 17 it's in my lungs so we go back to the ER because once again, a year later, I couldn't breathe and they diagnosed me with bronchitis again and gave me another breathing treatment and that pissed mom off. Mom was tired of dealing with it. She was tired of shoveling out this money and uh, she got tiffy. She got tiffy with the doctors and she got tiffy with the nurses and she said she does not have bronchitis. She can't breathe. She has asthma. So mom got in their faces about it, gave me another breathing treatment, and I move along with my life. Um, still don't have a regular inhaler, still don't have all that. Then when I got into my 20s, um, I believe it was in my 20s, um, I had Wyatt at 26. So it was, it was just me and Alex, yeah. I don't remember, it's in my 20s. I couldn't breathe again. And I finally, and every time, I can't tell you, I've been to the ER like four times with my asthma. And uh, one time I went to the ER, they gave me a breathing treatment again, and I finally got a prescription for an albuterol inhaler. They're like, you have allergy-induced asthma. And I'm like, finally, after all these years, if my allergies are in check, my lungs are in check. Allergy-induced asthma. Finally, we have a diagnosis in my early 20s. So I get another breathing treatment. And then we pack up and we move to Iowa. I marry the boy's dad. Wyatt's a baby. We pack up and we move to Iowa. I have had trips to the ER. I have my albuterol. Um, when I turned 30, we lived in Iowa. And um, in Iowa, the climate's different, and the corn is cross-pollinating. And I couldn't breathe in Iowa. I could not breathe in Iowa. And in the wintertime, it made it worse. The spring, the, the, all of Iowa, it didn't matter what season it was, I, Amy couldn't breathe. So for like a week, I was hurting, and my albuterol wasn't doing anything. At this point, I don't have Singular yet, my lung pill. All I have is, is Benadryl and an inhaler. And for like a week, I couldn't breathe. And then one night, I was in our bedroom. The boys were in bed. And I told Chris, my husband, the boy's dad, um, I said, man, I can't breathe. Like, it was one of the worst asthma attacks I've ever had. And my inhaler wasn't working. And that went on for like a week. And then finally, like on the fifth day, I'm laying in our bedroom. And I have pillows popped up. I'm sitting on the bed. And I have like four pillows popped up. And I'm leaning over to get the weight off of my lungs so that I could breathe. And people were like, why didn't you just go to the hospital? Well, we didn't have insurance yet. We were young, we were broke, we had three babies. You know, it was just, I was trying to hold off, you know? Well, on that fifth day, er, I said, you know, if I don't feel better by in the morning, I'm gonna take my albuterol, my, you know, my inhaler and my, been a drill and if I don't feel better in the morning we can go down to the little, little hospital I didn't feel better I would I could barely walk and we went to the ER told her what was going on and this little physician's assistant she ripped 
my ass. She was sugar. She was sugar and sweet like a mama. And she laid into me. She said, don't you ever, don't you ever let it get this out of control again, ever. And I'm like, okay, okay. So she gave me, sorry, I'm trying to merge. She gave me a breathing machine, a nebulizer to carry around for a week. And she's like, I want you to do three breathing treatments a week. And you keep this nebulizer. And if you need it longer, we'll keep it, you can keep it longer. And so, um, every four or five hours, I would do a breathing treatment. I'd just stop what I was doing. If we were at the grocery store, I'd sit in the car and do a breathing treatment. If we were at home, if we were, you know, I was raising kids. I was busy. I'm still busy. And my kids are grown, and I still go. Now, I'm a person that has always gone 100 miles an hour. And um, so, I just took this little thing with me everywhere I went. And uh, if I was in the car, I plugged it into the lighter, and it turned on that way. It was cool. Um, anyway, so I did that and I thought, oh my God, this is the neatest thing in the whole world. And so later on at some point, um, Chris and I got divorced. The boys are getting older and I, um, was, I got into property management and by this time I just have my albuterol inhaler. And no, Chris and I weren't divorced yet. We moved to Lone Grove, Oklahoma, Ardmore. And, um, I found a doctor down there and I said, can I just have a prescription? Cause back then you couldn't just hop on Amazon and buy a nebulizer. That wasn't a thing. I said, can I just buy my own breathing machine? I said, because I, that's all I need. I just need the machine. I know how to do it. I know I've had so many breathing treatments. I know what my body needs. I know how to operate the machine. Can I just, can I get my own? And they're like, yeah. And I had insurance and he wrote me a prescription for a nebulizer and I went down to the pharmacy. I paid 25 bucks and you know, albuterol liquid is super cheap. It always has been. It still is. And so at this point I invested in my own breathing machine. So there's that. Um, this is probably just going to be one video. I'll wrap it up and then we'll vlog the rest of our day in another video. But anyway, um, I got my own breathing machine. So I was winning. Okay, so for all the years, I had my breathing machine if I needed it, which I still use. Um, winter's coming up, so you'll see me doing breathing treatments. Um, and my albuterol inhaler for quick emergencies. And that carried me for years. Then I moved back to Tulsa. Chris and I got a divorce. I was on my own. Um, I got into property management. I had my little apartment. Um, and... Uh, you know, got my insurance. This was started up again. And that's when I found Dr. Atkinson. Uh, when I started property management and it was time to find a doctor, one of the girls that I work with, um, I was like, I need a doctor. She said, I go to Dr. Atkinson and I love him. And I'm like, awesome. That was 15 years ago. I went and saw Dr. Atkinson and he's been a godsend in my life. And that man for the last 15 years, 13, 13 years. Dr. Atkinson for the last 13 years has seen me every six months to check on my lungs. And he said, you need Singulair, which is what I call my lung pill. Um, he keeps me stocked up with um, my, neb my nebules for my machine. He keeps me on an antihistamine. Um, and then my Ativan, of course. And that's not lung related, but it could be. Um, if you start, those of you who have, I'm, I'm a busy, anxious person anyway, so I've been, I've been taking Ativan for, for 13 years, um, you know, as needed. I take half of one before I go to bed, or I'll take one if I'm freaking out, and I'm on a very, very low dose, because I don't, you know, I don't have panic attacks very often, but when I do... Um, or if I get real stressed out, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. So at that point, I'll break an out of van in half. I'll hit my inhaler and I'll calm down. Because when you start getting a panic attack or anxious or anxiety, it's all in my lungs. I don't know how it is with everybody else. Some people carry it in their tummy. Some carry it in their shoulders. But I know some of you know what I'm talking about. I cannot breathe. And so that also helps me get focused, get in check, and open my lungs up. So... My point is, 
For the last 13 years, I've been on Singular, a daily antihistamine. I always have my albuterol inhaler with me, and then my nebulizer is in my closet for when I need it. And so, <clears throat> it's just something that I have to keep in check. Before I go for a run, before I go for a workout, before I lay down and I go to sleep at night, I hit my inhaler twice. <clears throat> um, I'm always dry because I have to take an antihistamine every day. I drink a gallon of water every single day because I'm so dry, but that's just part of it. Albuterol will dry you out, antihistamine dries you out, and it's making me thirsty talking about it. So it took a lot of years to figure out, one, what was wrong, two, how to maintain it, how to handle it, how to control it. <clears throat> so I didn't have a full grasp on it until 13 years ago, and here we are. So that's my asthma story. <clears throat> So, if I didn't have allergies, I probably wouldn't have lung problems, but I have allergies. I'm allergic to everything. I'm allergic to, um, I'm allergic to cats. <clears throat> the main animals I can think of, I've never had a problem with any dogs. No breed of dog, I've never had a problem. Cats, I can't do, as, and that breaks my heart because I love cats. Oh my God. I'd be the cat lady if I could. So, I lived through Tracy B. and Tyler Ramey with their kitty cats. And my friend Helen Rigby Brumfield, she ha she's a cat lady. And I just, I live vicariously through them when it comes to cats. Um, so, cats, horses, severely allergic to horses. Um, guinea pigs. I'm allergic to guinea pigs. We found that out when the boys were little and they said, we want a guinea pig. So mama got them two guinea pigs and mama couldn't even go in that bedroom. I said, y'all are gonna have to take care of this guinea pig because I can't, I can't even hold it. Oh my God, my lungs just go, they just shut, they just shut down. And I sneeze and it's horrible, awful. So um, those are the three main animals. So like when I go out to charities out at Creek Ranch, I take my, I take my antihistamine every day, but she's got cattle. They've got uh, milk cows. They've got beef cows. They've got longhorns. They've got um, a pony. They've got a horse. They've got chickens and roosters and goats and dogs and cats. And I always dose up real good when I go to her house because I want to play with all the animals. <laughs> I want to ride the horse, which I do. Um, I want to pet the kitties, which I do. And I want to play with the goats, which I do, and chase the chickens and get the eggs and do all the things. And so I usually take my breathing machine and put it in my car with me and, you know, take my antihistamine and, and pray for the best. <laughs> but that's my asthma story. So if you have allergy-induced asthma, it can kick in at any time. The weather affects it, the pollen, everything, you guys know that. So that was 18 minutes of me telling you my asthma story and I'm almost to work. I'm going to cut this off now, but I do want to go to, I, I need to go to Dollar Tree um, at some point today or this evening, so uh, hopefully I'll be coming at you the next video will be a Dollar Tree haul, and hopefully we can find some funsies and goodies, okay? Okay, I'm almost to work. I love you guys. The Lord loves you more. I'm going to slow sip my coffee, and we will see you in the next video.